Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the privilege to share fellowship. Anoint me to teach truth in simple and clear language that everyone can understand. Anoint my listeners to understand better than I teach and to appreciate deeper than the revelations I bring. That at the end of the day, our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So coincidentally, Nankre is getting married the same day as our uh, brother and team lead in the U.S. is getting married. Um, Joel Faremi, great, 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 great guy, uh, December 16th. So um, guess which of them I will be attending. <laughs> Someone said they went to the U.S. I did Nigeria. <laughs> All right, so there are two faces to love just like every coin has two faces, all right? Now, what I'm going to share briefly, time is really gone on us in terms of the time I should have used to teach, uh, which may also affect Q&A at the end. <clears throat> there are two faces to love, and what I'm going to share tonight is what you need to understand, both as a single and as a married person. Uh, the truth is, I, I ran into a friend yesterday. He was by the miracle of Jesus um, that I, first of all, even got to the place because I should have killed three persons yesterday. Yeah. So I was standing by Games Village roundabout, and this guy decided to ride one way on the bike. And he had two guys on the bike that were just coming from football, two young chaps, uh, young boys. And here I was, I was just turning into the roundabout. My car is dented, by the way. Uh, I just turned into the roundabout, and this guy was coming full speed. So I just looked up, and here was this guy coming, three of them on the bike, and boom! I turned, he turned, but I mean, he hit the bumper so hard, He's dented, he's marked, and three of them were on the ground. So, of course, I had to stop, first of all, to be sure what's going on. And I said to them, I said to him, why were you riding? No way. I mean, the guys were impacted. I, I really hope they get better and fine because they look like boarding footballers. They're coming from sports, I think from the stadium, and this guy wanted to kill them. But um, I ended up, I was going to see my in-laws, so I decided to stop by the shop uh, to be responsible and get something for, and say good evening. Then I ran to an old a classmate, maybe she's here. She was saying to me yesterday, a schoolmate, all these stories that I'm telling you, you use me to preach, well, it's about to happen. So you know what happened? She began to tell me a lot of stories, beautiful stories. You know, she's in a very meaningful relationship right now, and she told me stories upon stories upon stories, uh, especially stories about, you know, staying in the Lord and the things that the Lord uh, took her through and the things that she escaped, all right, to be at the point. And she began to narrate to me how even when the pressures came and she had to withstand the pressure, the external pressure, and sit in the peace of the Lord. So she told me a lot of stories. You know, one of the things I figured when we're speaking is there are certain principles that cut across for any relationship to work. And uh, the mistake we make is when we speak about those things sometimes, we try to draw a big line between the single and the married. And the problem is the single goes to the same market that the married goes to. The single spends the same naira that, uh, there's no single naira and married naira. Do you get what I mean? So there are certain things that binds us together when it comes to principles, all right? And the love journey is a very funny journey. Everybody fantasizes marriage. Everybody. One of my ex is divorced. She broke my heart before I met Julia. I know plenty of people who are divorced today. And one of the things she told me yesterday is in one year of being single and facing pressure, four of our friends lost their marriages. Four. How, how do you beat that? Like, how do you beat that? Because the older you get, the more you see that people don't even understand certain principles. And that's what the Bible says, you know the truth, and the truth is what sets free. Because people go around thinking that demons are the problem, but truth is the problem. Because once truth sits in, no devil is powerful enough. For instance, there's no devil that can make you go to the gutter and drink it. Because truth is in oppression. So, demonic forces are as powerful as our lack of truth. So, we have downgraded truth, and that's why we are more at home, especially Nigerians, with miracle meetings than teaching meetings. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was speaking to some pastors in the U.S., and they spoke about plenty of Nigerian ministries, and we all laughed, and we said the truth, it looked like gossip, but it was not gossip. He said, we have a religion in Nigeria and Africa that is need-based. Need, 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 need. So if I just declare and miracles do happen, 
I'm not saying miracles don't happen. For instance, somebody reached out a few days ago. Her son, who is three, doesn't speak, doesn't respond. The only thing he's managed to say is mama and papa. Unfortunately, they had to travel and they're away. And I, you remember that day, and she was saying this thing. So I'm not speaking against power. So I said to her, I felt this surge of God's anointing. So I said to her, what's his name? And I stand in the name of Jesus and I lose his tongue. Guess what? The next day, oh my God, I was so touched when I saw the message. She called home and said, how are you? The boy said, fine. Hey, he was responding for the first time in three years to give any cognitive response. She was so, I'm not even sharing it to you, yeah? Jesus. All right, do you get what I mean? So truth is what sets free. So you, you see that we downgrade truth and for that reason, our lives are downgraded. All right? So now, when we speak about love, it's two-sided. Now, when you say a coin is two-sided, no part is less in quality. Do you get what I mean? So I'm not trying to talk about the good and the bad side. I'm talking about both sides. All right? So two dimensions, really, to the conversation. Two dimensions, really, to the conversation. I'm, I'm going to read a few things just to keep it in perspective. So love is like a coin. It has two faces. Understanding and managing both faces is what guarantees for a long-lasting relationship. Because the problem of the earth today is not the commencement of relationship, it's the perfecting of relationships. So everybody begins relationship with a type of excitement. You have never been to a wedding where they say, I don't know why they are pushing me. No, you see them dancing. All those your friends that introduced relationships to you that did not work, they were excited when they did introduce it. They were excited. That means they saw a side of the coin and didn't understand another part of it. Right? So it's so important. Now, to the single tonight, one of the things you need to do is to be able to forecast based on the things we're saying and to the married is to be able to understand and appreciate why the turns and the twists are happening, the twists and turns, yeah? Why it will happen. And, you know, especially to the single here, uh, one of the things you must do is I want too many people who are too excited about what is work. Just excited, just excited, just excited, just excited. All right? So understanding and managing both faces. Now, what's phase one? The emotional phase. There are three things I'll say about the emotional phase. All right? Number one, falling. There are three F's I'll use there. Falling, feeling, and fantasy. Number one, falling. Even as a married person, you will still fall. I didn't mean into sin. <laughs> When I explain falling, you would understand. Men have fallen many times. But when I was meditating about this message and I thought about this line, I said, my wife would just look at me. Okay. <laughs> falling. The single must understand falling. The married must understand falling. Because a lot of times, the reason we have problems is that we don't discern our stage. If you don't discern the, the falling stage, you make a mistake. What is the falling stage? Let's look at it. On the feelings now, I said there are two sides of the coin. Side number one is the emotional side, all right? And number one under the emotional side is the falling face. And what is it? At this stage, you are blown away by them. Their qualities and what attracts you to them. So it's them based, not you based. It's not even, you are not talking yet. It's them. Something, oh my God. I remember the first day I saw my wife, I actually fell. I say, what an angel, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right there. Have you ever met somebody you're talking about something else is running through your mind? She can't be single. She must be in a relationship. Somebody must have snapped her up. My God. Interactions are going on on the other side. When human beings standing on the outside, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is woman. <laughs> made by God. Die! She's in my house, by the way. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? That's falling. It's them based. It's about their qualities. It's about who they are. You know, if their sister came to my office today and we're having some conversation and I'm just like, you know, I gave some illustration. If you just go to a mall and a guy sees you right now, pam, 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 1,000 things will be run through his because of you. The person doesn't even have time to internalize. To The thing is just happening. Have you seen, oh my God, all the guys in this house are righteous, so I'm not speaking about you, but have you ever been driving and you saw a girl, you didn't know when you looked at the side mirror, my God, that's a side glory to God. Then you say, Kai! man of God, face your front. Face your front. Why? Something captivating. Something. Man, the way you're laughing, you have done it before. Do you get me? Something. Oh my God, how are you seeing that? Oh, do you 
get what I mean? So that's the falling face of the emotional interaction. Oh my word. She is falling for the temptation. Jesus Christ. You get what I mean? She's fine. You know, I, are you still with me? You are sure you are with me? Because somebody is judging themselves now. I don't fall tired. <laughs> and you know the funny thing? We always talk about this thing from the male perspective. Babes, they fall big time. Babes, they look like chai. Chai. Stop pretending you put to fall too. Hey, see him. Thought that can handsome. My God. Let me give you an example. Real example, and I'm not joking about it. You know what happened? Every time I put studies of beautiful girls, men fall. Every time I put studies of handsome men, girls used to chat me too. Is he single? <laughs> I remember one of those instances. Somebody said, is he single? I said, he's married with two children. She said, mm. Why? Right, something said, that's good. That's handsome. Some people don't cross this face. And you know the funny thing about it? Have you ever fallen for a person who when you came close was too real for you to fall? Just so real. I remember some time ago, uh, my late mom was in Lokoja, I was in McCordy, and I was traveling. Oh my God, Igbo people forgive me in advance. I was traveling from McCordy. So look at your, you know what happened? I missed my road. So I got to one place that was close to Enugu. My God, this girl was hawking. I think it was granite or something. No, opa, opa, opa. The beloved opa. How many of you have eaten real opa before? Jesus Christ. That thing can, trans, it can, it can translate you to another dimension. I saw this girl. My God, Igbo girl. Ah, I'm okay. They get fair. They get fine. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have you ever bought something from somebody not because of the product but because of the person? <laughs> lava, 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 lava. I'm too real for some people here. They say, a man of God. A man of God. This was about 2010, 2011. Guess what? When I called her to come, I didn't want to buy a car. I wanted direction. I don't miss road. I want to go to a local job. The moment she opened her mouth. How many of you know that Inda Boski guy? <laughs> her English was worse than the guy. I'm like, what just happened? You cannot compare the speech with the looks. Lamba, lava, lava. Let me not go ahead of myself. We'll come to that point. So falling is a stage where you are not in control. It just happens. And it happens so fast. Hey, let me give another confession. What a night of confession, Jesus Christ. So, growing up in McCurdy, my friend and I used to have a joke. Guys know this thing more than ladies. Hey, Jesus, help me. What kind of confession? After this kind of deep worship, I'm just confessing, confessing, confessing. You know, when you're going and you see a lady from behind, they will not say, we won't see your face if they face much. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ladies, I'm telling you what men do. I'm telling you what men do. Baby, forgive me in advance. Hey! We're good guys, though. I've been born against as a teenager. I'm telling you. So I'm not... I'm <laughs> but you know what just happened? Captivated. Captivated by your beauty. Fascinated by your love. Intoxicated by your mercy, forever will not be enough. What just happened? Unfortunately, a lot of people followed the fall. You know, some people, the number of heartbreaks you have had in life is because you followed the fall. You did not follow what I'm explaining tonight. You followed a captivation. At this point, there's no merit. No merit. You know, as Nigerian skit makers, I, by the way, I, I, I'm amazed at how, how many Christians find nonsense skits easy to watch. Nigerian skit makers right now are objectifying women and we think it's funny. It's not because the skit is good. They are seeing boobs and bum bum. Hello? Okay. Me, I don't have to pretend. So when I tell you, so it's just like somebody is watching macaroni. Depravity is catching you. Because it is advertising a thing. 
It is drawing attention to lust. Nothing more than it. Okay? So, now the fall has everything to do with sensual perception or lust. Lust is not just about sexual. It's about so much. There's, there's an appeal. All right? And that's why a lot of people are married to beautiful nonsense and handsome disasters. All right? Yeah, so... It's about the fall, right? The next dimension of the emotional side of the coin, and that's why I like, you know, I, I like, um, before I enter the next dimension of the emotional face of the coin, uh, I, 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 Pastor B.C. Adewale, oh my God. See, I compare your wife's 40-something-year-old breast to a 20-something-year-old breast. They are not the same. You are the one that flattened it. Enjoy the flat tire. Love it. Suck it like that. Enjoy. Oh, my singles are here. I need to be careful. Stay there. This breast, now me put you like this. I shall enjoy you till the end of the age. Your 40 something year old eye, you are carrying to go and look for 20 year old breast. No. Your eye is older than that breast, 20 years. Leave it. Face here. Parental guidance, 18 plus. <laughs> this is why you hear nonsense. I, 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 I'm no longer in love with her. I'm now falling in love with her. Shut up! What do you call love? Yeah, I'm no longer, I'm, I'm no longer, I'm no longer. Because somebody just walked, you saw something. Close your eyes, my friend. <laughs> Number two stage of the emotional face is the stage of feelings. Feelings is when you begin to internalize what you have interacted with. You know, you know, you are trying to get some Christians to meditate. They can't meditate, but they can think about woman and man. You, you, you know that thing you used to do where you just sit down and say, my God, chai. How many of you have ever kept malice with a person and the person look finer when you're keeping malice? <laughs> People always look good when you're keeping malice with them. <laughs> All right? The stage of feelings for a lot of people, at that stage, there's no interaction. There's internalizing. You know, at this point, you are... For instance, I, I know a situation where I went somewhere to minister and a lady was telling me about a guy. She was so dazzled, razzled, and, you know, carried away by him. Oh, my God, oh, my God, the next week he released this proposal video. <laughs> the way she was speaking, she had over-internalized. And you girls fall for that a lot, man. Somebody say hi. You take it as proposal. Hi is not proposal. Hi is a greeting. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's just a greeting. Even guys... Man, I've seen a lot of heartbroken people who just internalized. And when it gets to the university of feelings is when attention begins to breed affection. You know, where you are so carried away with all the... You, you know, eh, all of us did it. I used to talk to my wife like five hours. I can't remember what was on the agenda. We just wasted each other's time. You know, just talking, just talking, just talking. Then you go back. If I, this was getting some married men into trouble, and I'm going to explain. You have an unholy chat that you should not have in the first place. You do not now have sense to say, this thing, do you know people keep setting conversations to internalize? How many of you have had conversations that are sweet? You go back to have you reading it? Oh my God. <laughs> Did I say married men? Married men and women. I'm not saying deleting is righteous. But people keep things to internalize. Then they are caught. Then you ask, why did you keep this kind of thing? You know why? The person wants to sit in the house. She said, I miss you too. <laughs> Mumu. I miss you too. That person is living for a feeling. That person wants to sit and enjoy a mood. Hey. Hey, you know those days, that's why we wrapped our wife's head with letter. We don't write letter. Number one, my wife liked my handwriting. My handwriting confuses her. I just write it first of all. I love you. You know, I have two handwritings. <laughs> the normal handwriting and the love handwriting. Hey, if you don't have handwriting for love as a man, you don't have sense. Wow. You write it. Even till now, my wife would just buy bundles of books. You bring it home. Please write our name. <laughs> you want to see handwriting. <laughs> I think that has held you for 18 years. He's still holding you. you deliver yourself. I'll stop writing. I'll write to you later next week. My God. 
Before I toasted her, I wrote four pages. Full scalp. I signed on the last line. <laughs> My God! So the good side to what I'm saying is, in a love relationship, give the person enough to internalize. That's the good side to what I'm saying. So I'm not, see, all I'm describing, I'm just describing faces. I'm not describing it's bad. Hey, I'm not talking bad yet. Do you get what I mean? Of course, I'm talking about some extreme story, but... That's what I tell people. One of the things that propels any relationship is to give enough memories that create belief in the future. Do you get what I mean? So it's so important. That's the feeling stage of the emotional side of the coin. All right, let me read from my note. At this stage, you are blown away by them, their qualities, and what attracts you to them. The pool is holy. Okay, no, sorry. This is when you begin to internalize them. Their qualities, building affection from their attention or by your meditation. These are the two ways it grows. I'm either meditating or taking it from the attention I'm getting. Now, the, this side of the coin is good. But this is why a lot of relationships fail. Because this is where we focus on when it comes to relationships. We just focus here. We just focus so much on uh, the fall, the feelings. We just internalize and it leads us to the third phase of the emotional side of the coin. What's that third phase? That thought phase is the fantasy phase of the emotional side of the coin. Fantasy. Where you begin to build castles. You begin to build the future. I'll soon tell you why this side of the coin is dangerous. People begin to build. People begin to imagine. Hey, person will never get passport. He don't go to Paris. Passport he no get. He's already in Paris. All right. So at this stage you see that there's fantasizing. There is building of stuff. All right, let me read again from the note. Keep in perspective. This is where you begin to build castles for the future. At this point, you are dreaming, whether real or just made up. You are placing them in the future with you. The downside to this for single people is on the flip side of the coin. Flip side of the coin. Why is it the downside, like I said? Too many people are building what is not real. Nothing is real about what they're building. People either date actual people or date their imagination. So a lot of times, people are processing the person in their life by an imagination. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You know, it's not like movies. Movies just show you how people show up. They don't show you how they're dressed up. Because it's going to be boring to the viewer. So a lot of people process love like a movie. Who washes the plate they used to eat in movies? It's only home videos, Nigerian movie. The Igwe must always be dressed like Igwe. In real life, it's not true. Igwe used to wear boxers. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? It's always, I mean, it's a Nigerian movie that the Lola will wake up on the bed fully dressed yeah. with crown on her head. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. It's just like if I decide to go around tonight, I will not do it in Jesus' name. And begin to pull everybody's wig. We'll see what's on that. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> Natural hair gang, God bless you. Uh, uh, your wig is at home. <laughs> Praise God. So this is this side of the coin. Is the emotional side of the coin. Fall, feelings, fantasy. Some people have built whole relationships on it. Gary Chapman places the emotional lifespan of a relationship at two years. It will win. There was a point in this relationship the emotion was doing me. My eye don't clear. Yes, it don't clear. Anything I say about Julia right now is by choice, not by emotion. I evoke the emotion. Marriage is an intensively manual relationship. How many of you have a generator that is not key to start? You pull it. In fact, there's a generator that has stop on generator. Vroom! Ka ka ka! Vroom! Ka ka ka! Vroom! Ka 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 Hey, single people are here. I must still give this illustration. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please hold <laughs> Praise God. I, I get the point I'm making. Okay, let me not give that illustration. That illustration is there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the other side of the coin. I'm doing so well with time. Jesus Christ. 
The, <laughs> the other side of the coin is the intentional side of a coin. This is what is often missing in relationships. Praise God. Say praise God. Say praise God. <laughs> Please hold that. All right? Somebody say intention outside of the coin. Number one is the, I have three R's on the intention outside. R number one is realistic. All of us are likely to experience the fall. I encourage people to experience the fall in their relationship. It's good. It's good for the person because I, I, I've been sharing that marriage is an intensively sexual relationship. Please don't believe God. <laughs> don't believe God in the issues of attraction. I, I'm believing God I'll be attracted to you. And it's not true. One of the reasons I did not like like my girls is that they don't look good in traditional. In my own eye. But my wife, when she wore the thing in school, my God. I said, I like what I'm... We behold until we are... Okay. How far can you see? How far can you wait? How far can you wait? So when she came and told me, you know, what will happen if I give birth and I'm perpetually pregnant, the stomach could not go back. I said, oh, push it. Because I want some flesh. I don't want to marry a piece of broom. No, 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 no. I have no problem with anybody that is... You see, do you see how mumuristic the thought sounded? I just saw those fellowship sisters when they were traditional. I don't understand. The child is not sitting in African clothes, needs to sit. Glory. I say no more. My God. She was even more like what then than now. See, you're just smiling mola to premola. Center of attention. My God. Yes, yes. You want to even cry? Cry. Cry, my beloved. Cry. Why are you shouting, Jesus? I should not talk. God gave me mouth. She married me. Who sent her? She's all quiet people. This is the reality face. She's all quiet people. She didn't know how to marry them. I went to marry people like me. Now I'll be talking. Just like somebody that went and married divine. That will always be doing an answer. She can't say. <laughs> he will talk. He must talk. Reality. Every emotion must be subjected to the realistic thought if you will be safe. The reason a lot of people. See. I tell you the truth, I kid not. You sit on counseling table, you know what people do? People push away reality when they're in fantasy. Because they want to hold on to what they are built in their mind and not deal with what they are dealing with. Let me tell you, if you marry a guy that is broke, you are a broke wife. I didn't say you should not marry him. They married me broke. I know that one. I married through family support. Her salary was 10 times my salary. Reality. Yes, believe in the future. That's good. But not castles in the air. Because castles in the air is... See, let me tell you. If you are dating an unserious person, you are dating an unserious person. If you are dating a person who does not have ambition, he's not just broke for now, you are broke for the future. You are not just living in one room. You shall live in one and a half room soon. But that's the progress you make. I'm telling you. Because you know how I tell people, it's good to marry the person you love. But some people you love are disaster to you. Because there is more than the emotion, the fantasy, and all of that. And that's why when you speak to young people, they don't understand. Because the young person is high on emotion. I can't do without you. It's a lie. I can do without you. <laughs> Actually, don't marry a person you cannot do without. If I can't do without you, God is soon going to ask for you. Because you're an idol. Amen. You're not God. You're an idol. <gasps> I can do without you, my sister. All those people that lied, they lied. Do you realize that even top men of God, when their wife died, one year they are married? But by choice, I place you in a place. Do you get what I'm saying? Reality. You see these emotions? They are fickle. Some of you, your best friend of seven years ago is not in your life. You have blocked them. <laughs> you have blocked them. So anytime you find yourself in a love relationship, you must pass the reality test. And it's not African magic. Where tomorrow you just meet one guy, the guy will just change his destiny. Des Have you realized across the last 10 years, destiny is not changed like that. <laughs> Dollar and Naira, they are still making progress. They are still interacting. 
the relationship between dollar and naira is sitting like this. Do you understand? <laughs> if I don't believe God any year of my life, I believe him this year. We traveled all the travel with the dance of the dollar and the naira. You will look at some ticket. When I told people I was backsliding the soul about travel, you didn't understand. So when we had the first conversation about South Africa, by the way, um, April the 19th, 2024, you know, has been fixed and so many things would happen in South Africa. I, when I looked at the ticket, the ticket tickled me. <laughs> That's out of Kailon. That's out of Kailon. I'm like, this is not good. Every relationship must be subjected to the reality check. And I'm going to talk about that now. In fact, I'm not talking to singles alone right now. So married people, the reason why you have over expectation and your heart is broken day to day is that you have not subjected your marriage to reality check. Your marriage is what it is. If you married my type, you married my type. Who you are married to is who they are. Thank God for the spirit of faith to pray for them, to read the dimensions that you read, but where they are now is where they are. And somebody is here dating somebody, you are not facing, you are, see, you are facing something else. Reality check. Reality check. You know, you know some love relationships, the moment of reality comes when they try to plan, to plan wedding. Then I realize that it takes money to actually do relationship. I just love somebody's daughter. You didn't pay school fees. They pay school fees. Yeah, it's not your father. I don't know why your father is difficult. He pays school fees. <laughs> you, the only thing I pay for is boat. <laughs> and I wonder why her dad is protective. The dad is protective because he's in reality. I was speaking to a senior colleague yesterday. We left court. day before yesterday. We left court, so we went to his office and we we're talking. And he was just telling me about things, you know, that I've been thinking about. Man, my guy is sitting on about fifteen million of school fees yearly. Fifteen M, two university, uh, one university, two in secondary school. He's sitting on fifteen M basic tuition. Not abroad here. Reality check. Why am I feeling like saying plenty of things that I should say only a couple's for them? You know, Father, help the singles. You know, one day I was so, you know, man of God is not supposed to be frustrated, but, but I was just so frustrated about plenty of things. The two were just frustrated, frustrated. So I pulled my wife close and we had fellowship. So I said, I see why poor people have a lot of children. <laughs> May the Lord give you an understanding. I'm like, I'm like, this was not love making, this was pressure, transfer, transfer, pressure, pressure, pressure. pressure. Reality check. May the Lord give you understand. I say poor people who have plenty children because the only point of rest and relaxation. But I'll come here. <laughs> Reality check. You know you barely know anybody in your church, right? You know why? Where you put me is I'm the rich of the earth. I will never be sick in my life. They took Panadol last night. Yeah. Reality check. Yeah. Your father is still giving you pocket money. You are lying to a girl. I will take care of my brother. Calm down. Right now, you cannot. You are a pocket money candidate. <laughs> I put a video recently where I said I give my wife more hope than money. That's reality check. Yeah. And we have a generation of Christians who don't discern the difference between faith and living. Mm. So, why you, you know, ah, ah, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah, I know. I know. But my brother, you ate it by yesterday. Because you need to feed the body. So, a lot of relationships are not subject. That's why married people have over expectation. The truth is you are supposed to discern who you are dating or marry to the point where you know what to expect. I'm telling you. So you have people expecting what should never be expected. Everybody you chose to marry is a bundle of strengths and weaknesses. You saw the weaknesses, you used fantasy to cover it. You now entered marriage, you think you are stronger than Holy Spirit. Somebody has been born again since 2000. Holy Spirit is still trying to deal with some things in them. You, you came only in 2021. You married them. There's a 2023, you think that's, it's not working. You are not more than Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has been striving before you came. Holy Spirit has been laboring night and day. Stop it. Don't do it. Stop it. Don't do it. Sometimes they say, okay. Sometimes they say, hmm. Holy Spirit, wait first. 
and they come. Facts. See, yeah. <clears throat> so realistic phase of the intentional side of the coin, this is where you leave all the emotions aside and realistically consider who they actually are. Who are you actually? Because all of us get into people's lives with assumptions. When you meet a person in church, you assume they are born again. When you meet, see, I believe no generation has proven to you like this one. That fervency of prayer is not equal to fervency of character. Then they have not driven one kilometer. Work. Some people, in fact, the fervency of their anger is equal to the fervency of their prayer life. <laughs> Who are you? Actually. Actually. Somebody gave me a story. I mean, it was so painful. Because the actual is always not only seen, it is discerned. She was dating this guy. He was the shining light of his family. The Christian the family knew. Then she saw a trance that there's a woman in your life. And she just called him up. Who is the woman in your life? If he had actually lied, she may have taken it. But it's like the spirit was moving from the trance to the question. The guy opened up. Before that time, all he had said was that he works remotely because he made a lot of money. There was actually a sugar mommy funding the life. Who are they actually? Realistic question. Who are they actually? What are your strengths? See, if you are afraid to uncover the weaknesses of the person you are dating, then you are afraid of facing your destiny. Because that's who you are. If I marry you, I'm not going to marry my hope. I'm going to marry who you are. It's not what I hope. So you have a lot of single people hoping, hoping. Keep the hope aside. Who are you? Because let me tell you the truth. When you leave the altar of marriage, you are taking home who you took oath with. The only thing that changes is in the eye of God, you are now bound. But the person you took oath with is a real person and you are going to end up with that real person. So, the realistic phase, like I said, is where you leave all the emotions aside and realistically consider who they actually are, who they have proven to be. That's phase two. Because getting into a relationship with anybody is giving them a chance to confirm your assumptions. What have you proven to be? I give you a chance. Confirm my assumptions. Somebody told me a story. She had to leave a guy because the guy used to beat his sister. He had not beaten her. But the prophecy was clear. It's testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy. <laughs> Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> he saw, she saw evidence. And that's what I tell people. Not because you have the spirit of suspicion, but when somebody comes into your life, give them enough time to confirm who they are. I need to verify who you are. And for the married, I'm talking to at this point, some people not need to go and have a reality check. We are fighting to the degree to which I have refused to understand who my partner is. That's why we're fighting. I meet people. In fact, that's why I did a short teaching at the point, soul and spouse. I said a lot of people are expecting their spouses to deliver at a level of a soul that had not been captured. So you are coming to me talking about symptoms and I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the remote cause. The remote cause is that this guy is not, has never been dedicated to Jesus. Because the greatest hope of my wife is not Pastor Kinsley Okonko or anybody who teaches relationship. It is my relationship with Jesus. Because my ears will be shut to even the truth if the Holy Spirit cannot walk on me to hear the truth. The Bible said that the same word that was taught to us is the one that was taught to them, but it did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. In essence, faith is the mixture that makes any thought word come alive. Do you get what I mean? So you have people. Guess what? Now, this, this, when I, whenever I say this, it confuses Christian people, but I'm going to clear the confusion. The stability of a marriage 
is actually dependent on the maturity of the believer, not activity. So a lot of times when you say that, they are now wondering, but the person has so-and-so activity, has so-and-so activity. And that's what I was teaching at an international pastor's conference somewhere uh, earlier this year. And I began to explain to them how you can be under the anointing and feel good with God's presence. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. It's a gifting. And guess what? A lot of times God bypasses your error to reach people because people are more important than your error. That's why Balaam's donkey could speak. Melu Malu spoke. You have mouth. God will even use you. But that does not translate to maturity to run a home, to run a life. So reality face actually brings you face to face with what's the quality of your Christianity? What's the quality of your Christianity? All these shouts we are shouting. We are in a very loud generation. Bishop Oedipo told somebody something that I, I can't, I, the thing stayed with me. He said, my generation has works, your generation has words. Yeah. See, we have works. We can show you proofs. You're in cha-cha-cha, 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 cha-cha. What's the quality? That reality, what have you proven to be? What have you proven to be? You know what I tell people? If you want to see people, eh, go to their natural habitat, where they live, where they work. How they treat ordinary people. See, <laughs> we're in a very loquacious Christian generation. I mean, minister is, is sad. We're high on nonsense. High. We're not after souls, we're after records. Total nonsense. That's why we're having catchment area. My people, my people, my people, my people. We're so bothered about things Jesus is not bothered about. There's an entire world perishing. I know you support Israel over Hamas, but watch the news and see the souls that are perishing. Are they going to heaven? Are they not questions we have not asked ourselves? Have you thought about the Middle East and how much the gospel has not made advance? Jesus died for them too. This is specifically to the singles. If realistically a person doesn't have a purpose beyond you, you are with the wrong person. If realistically a person does not have a purpose in God beyond their ambition, you are with the wrong person. Ambition is so fickle. I want to make money. I've met some believers. You know, I, I, I'm a billionaire. Billionaire fire. I know many unbelievers who don't have billi who have billions. Multi billion. In fact, who do not believe in Jesus? That's too mundane to talk about. So realistically, I mean your life. Because the security of any marriage is the purpose by which the people work. What's the purpose? What's the overriding purpose? Money you shall make, fame you shall have. Yeah, you know, sometimes we are just going to our children and they are asking, Daddy, are you famous? Everybody's greeting you. I'm like, I turn to Julia at the point like, who taught them the concept of fame at this age? Earth pulls at you with nonsense too early. So when you come into them realistically, a friend gave me a story. She broke the relationship because it didn't have sense. The guy took her to his uncle. The man wrote a check in her presence, 25 million. Say for the first time you brought a reasonable girl to me. Guess what? Reality face. She didn't see one cup of the money. They gave you money on account of me. My type, you go see 10 to 15 straight. Because he's a rich kid also. He didn't see, she didn't see kind. By that point, at that point, you're just excited. Oh my God. <laughs> you are destiny with change. When I enter, when I become the law, I will, I will collect my own. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Even when they are flying you, they will buy the tickets. You can't even have the money to buy the ticket. So some people come to me for counseling, and I'm just seeing all the things you should have seen. I've said this several times. I repeat it here. When you're dating, sit on the judgment seat. Because marriage will force you on the mercy seat. So judge Stanley. 
George. George. Somebody said, but the Bible said, judge not. I said, that's about going to heaven. But by entering my life, I'll judge you. <laughs> the grace of God has saved you for heaven. But for my life. Because this is the single most important decision you take for the rest of your life. And for most people, almost everybody, whoever gets married, you are deciding for the longer part of your life. For instance, you married 25, 30, 40, you want to live to be 80, 90. Except you don't live long. If you manage to live long, the decision of marriage covers the longer part of your life. I'm not saying this to scare, I'm saying this to say calm down. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah, he that believes does not make haste. There's too much haste in this generation. So when people ask me, hey, you people don't want us to rush marriage, rush marriage, what will we be doing? We are doing confirmation. Even in checkered and broken Nigerian politics, when they make ministerial appointment, they still go for confirmation, even though they just go and bow. But there's a process. That's why you know some people, when they bring babe to you, anything you want to talk, they don't want to hear, oh my God, oh my God. Do you know how many relationships are what broken after, oh my God, oh my God, God told me. Thank you. And I, think, I wonder which God said, is he Shongo? Or... <laughs> Reality. So to the married, what's the assignment I'm giving you tonight? Go and stop fighting. Go home. Do X-ray. Pass your spouse through the MRI machine. Examine them. And decide, I'm not going to fight you again. I'm going to look for better ways because this one, now you will be with this. Is me be this? Is me be this? Is you be this? Examination. Examine. Examine. You must examine. What more do I have to say about the realistic face? Realistic face. All right, consider who they actually are, who they are proven to be, and what it looks like, what the future will look like, are in essence. If I take this person for all I have uncovered, what is the future like? Right? So you stand up from the fall, stop swimming in the emotions, and cut the fantasy. This is who you are. This is exactly what you are. And that's why I tell people, first five years of marriage, ah, ask anybody. Shocks, left, right, center. Because a lot of people were not taught. So they married a stranger, entered the marriage, and met the person. Bam, 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 bam. In fact, I, I've been speaking to some couples who are getting married about this period, and I'm saying to them, the greatest thing I'll tell you after all the teachings is enter marriage with shock absorber. <laughs> it goes shock you. Let me also say something about this reality face. Statistics has it in America that those who cohabited before they married have a higher divorce rate than those who didn't. Yeah. So you see people who cohabited for eight years decide to marry and the marriage fails in one year. And I'll tell you why. They assumed that the rules of liberty which they exercise with no responsibility, while they were living together, would apply. Then they cross over into marriage with assumption. Then assumption say, bia, bia, bia. you don't have sense. Because the moment they cross over and took an oath, responsibility, burden, demand, came into a relationship that was otherwise free. Somebody who could stand up and walk away now needed a court for divorce. Somebody who could say, I'm not doing it again and it's fine. Now needed a process. Now had family. Now had people who understand and who play a part. So the rate is high. The first time I saw the statistics, I was shocked. Like, how? Why? I thought they knew each other better. No, the rules were different. They entered with assumption. And it's common knowledge that assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Don't assume. They are who they are. Like the first time my wife farted in my presence, she thought the ground would open, it didn't open, she's still in my house. <laughs> we were dating. And I was this very funny guy, I'm still funny. 
In law, did not work out of attempted stand-up comedy for economic reasons? So we were to eat something. I went to visit her, and I cracked a joke, and she, and she laughed. Oh, my God. See, reality face. See the kind of man she might be talking about. He'll be talking about farting. But some men of God are so organized, they'll never talk about the glory of God is here. That's why I like my brand of men of God. We used to tell people the thing that is open. Because all the people that is the glorious God. When they finish the service, <laughs> and they are going to the car. Pra, 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 pra. <laughs> yeah! Marry a man like me, you're happy. <laughs> Can't be embarrassed about anything. I, I had one colleague. I'm not kidding. I was shocked. I said, what kind of civilization is this? We're having a meeting. She just fired and said, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, she didn't sorry. She didn't say sorry. She said, excuse me. <laughs> then she farted again. <laughs> Two farts in one minute. She just, she just said, excuse me. I said, who trained this one? <laughs> Reality. She's married now. I pity for her husband. Because they can just be in a board meeting. Brrr. Excuse me. Face it. It's what it is. The second R of the intentional side of the coin is responsible. We have a lot of people get into a relationship and marriage who demand everything but do not take responsibility. As I got a revelation of God's word, I stopped placing demand on my wife to love me. The Bible says that Husbands ought to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself. Then the Bible says that we love him as he. We love him because he first loved us. So the responsibility I've taken is to provoke her love and not demand it. So you have a lot of people who are not taking responsibility for their part. If I posted somebody and somebody told me, ah, is he in the Bible? I say, yeah. Scripture still has roles for both. And like I was saying just recently, the Old Testament contains little or no example and principle for marriage in the practical sense. So what God did was, God through the apostles gave us the body of knowledge that Adam truncated. Because Ad God gave Adam a wife, but before he began to express the principles, the fall happened. So the Old Testament was a falling age. Why do I say so? Are you saying that when I'm 70 like David, they're going to give me a young girl to warm me? That's why when they make those arguments with you on social media, don't argue. The patriarchs of old are no examples of marriage. They lived in a fallen age. That's why one of the greatest statements Jesus made when it came to the issue of marriage is in the beginning, it was not so. So when you talk about the patriarchs of old, there's no argument. Somebody say, boys, in the Bible. Satan is also in the Bible. Why don't you follow him? There are three persons who speak in the Bible. God spoke, Satan spoke, man spoke. Not everything in the word of God is the word of God. So what are you talking about? Jesus confronted Satan inside Bible. Satan spoke, he was quoted. So should I go and quote what Satan said and quote him? So when the apostles began to teach, they were teaching the thing that God wanted to teach Adam. What do you think he came down in the cool of the day for? He came for lectures. We always see it as fellowship because the fellowship of God is where God imparts knowledge. So he came to teach him how to treat his wife. But he fell and truncated the lecture. So in the New Testament, what the apostles did was that they received by revelation the body of knowledge by which we can stand and the body of knowledge places responsibility. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself. So I saw what Adam did not receive in his curriculum because a new teacher came on board. Do you realize the scripture tells us about the testaments and how they teach? So the testament began to teach. So he calls me up. Come on, Peter. I know your fathers had their wives as their first child. You are not going to have us so. Love us, Christ. Love the church. The little part of the curriculum we saw in Adam was when Adam said, you are now flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. We shall be, you shall be called woman. One flesh. Unity. So you see a lot of people going to marry. I'm telling you, when you take a poll with people of why they are getting married, you should be so disappointed. 
I have spoken to Christians who just want a woman to give them children. And that's why two years of marriage, the child is not come, the marriage is broken because they're married to have children. When I took this oath of marriage, I took an oath as a teacher to nurture her as Christ, not just the church. I took an oath to form her. I took an oath to name her. I took an oath to structure who she is, what she becomes, because that's exactly the power he gave to Adam. He tested Adam with animals so that he doesn't destroy his wife. So when Adam was done, God opened the books. Everything I should have called them, he called. So you're dating a guy who can't even speak life to you. And you're telling me, you don't understand the love. There's no love, you're a fool. He will rock your, you will suffer. I'm telling you, your intercessory ministry has started. Start praying. Start all night rehearsal. So what am I looking for as a single? Do you have the capacity to take responsibility for your instruction? The part they instruct you. You know, it's just like living in this generation where people are so feministic in everything about the nonsense feminist argument in the extreme sense is 100% against scripture. You see this woman? I'm her boss. I'm her lord. Oh, I know you're very popular. You know, this is the type of place bloggers like. They just repeat it. I'm a boss. You see this man? I'm a boss. 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 Yes, I am. Go and read First Peter chapter 3. He says you should be like your mother, Sarah. Not in the adorning of hell, when of gold jewelry. See, that quiet and a gentle spirit. He said the one who deferred to Abraham, calling her Lord. There was a time during counseling, I was counseling people. I counseled a series of persons that period. When they are getting married in my office, and guess what I did to them? I'll tell the girl, stand up, go on your knees in front of him, and say, my Lord, my God, I saw the pain in a lot of people's eyes. And some of them want to stand up. I say, remain there. Say, my Lord. Hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my Lord. <laughs> I say remain there. I'm actually more feminist than a lot of feminists. Because many of them are demonized. I'm not. What's true feminism? It's a beautiful woman should be taken care of. Because there's no generation where women, where peop, women objectify women more than anybody. This generation. They say people are kind of feminist, feminist, feminist. When you see what they do to themselves. Do you know when a girl doesn't dress well, she's a fool? And she does not speak feminism? Because what they think feminism is, is a battle with the male figure. No. That's stupid. How many of you will clap for me if I start contesting to be pregnant? That's foolishness. Why are you trying to take a role? Why don't you want to be a baby girl? I landed US, I just had baby, I saw stress all over her face. I did what a man should do. I went online. I booked a spa session, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Booked a ride. Say, Madam, you're leaving the baby with me, you're going. Say, what? How did you know I needed that? I'm a man. That's clap for me, clap for me. Yeah. Man, this babe went. Guess what? She slept on the table. <laughs> there were, there were, ha! She slept. My God. She landed back home. I said, the wife that left this house is not the one that is coming. Yes. Is a fresh one. Jesus. Feminist, feminist. When man just pamper you now, you drop all your feminism. He starts smiling mola to primola. I'm a man. She's my help. I know my place. So, at the intentional phase, the second R, I say number one is reality, realistic. Number two is responsible. I take responsibility. So in essence, as we are walking down the aisle, we are walking on specific instructions. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. In essence, my love for her is not performance driven. It's in spite of her. This oath I am going to take is an oath of debt. That's what the man is working on. But the fool thinks he wants to go home and cross his leg. Where's my dinner? I'm an activator. That's my responsibility. 
I activate the mood that runs this home. That's why they, see, that's why marriage are failing as they are. Anytime I put the blame so much on male like this, people will be vexing with me. Excuse me? I don't, all the flights I've done this year, I don't know the color of the captain. I get in there and I trust he's taking me somewhere. I take responsibility for where this marriage is going to. And what happens to us? I was a woman. I must say this one with every sense of responsibility. All the feminist noise you hear, we do not have a generation where women are downgraded in their own mind as they are like this one. Where people just want to enter marriage and think that the man is Alpha and Omega. He's not. You are help. Between the helper and the helped, who is more important? So you have people who are not taking responsibility. That's why you see some girls putting body on a 25 year old that they cannot put on their 65 year old father. Your father trained you, he has no blow. You want to marry a boy that has blow. <laughs> May God help you. Your father is still broke. <laughs> it tells you that a man can work for 65 years and he's still trusting God. Then you meet Manuel. When did they burn him? You want him to come with Bugatti? He, there's no Bugatti anything. It's just the tea you have. You don't have Bugatti yet. <laughs> so here's the deal. I'll give you an example. Real example. I began to give an example in our primitive class at a point. And I tell the females to list between 20 and 50 things that it means to be a wife. And tell the male to list between 20 and 50 things what it means to be a husband. Because you know why? A lot of people are taking an oath to arrive at a place they don't understand. It's responsibility. A good marriage is a marriage between two responsible persons who are taking their set of instructions as their matching order. So I'm here to love, she's here to help. So if she wakes up every day not expecting, ah, yeah, husband, be husband. That's why you see eh, more women are teaching husband roles than men. And more men are trying to teach submission than women. Because we are so focused on what is not our place. Curriculum that is my own, I have not understood it. I'm trying to teach the curriculum that is not my own. So you go online. The people talking about submission, men. The people talking about love, women. So they have converted a need to a lecture. Because you need it, it caught your attention. But the thing that you need to practice as an instruction is not catching your attention because it's a burden. I've been using this example. I'm sure you're bored of it already. This is decoder. I am the remote. When I want music channel, I press it. If I want us to start dancing, I press it. It's my responsibility. Ah, I don't understand. My wife, my wife, my wife, my wife. Oh God, shut up. Activate. Sometimes the reason you burn the midnight is no longer can do. It's midnight work. You see that Pepe can rest and you can Pepe her. My God. Lebe, lebe, lebe. <laughs> you get what you go buy for your wife, Manuel. All the demons in our village, the witches of their village, even if they come here and say, hold on, hold on. <laughs> My husband is trying. <laughs> My husband is trying. I get what I'm saying. So responsibility. A good marriage is a marriage between two responsible. And what is responsible in this context is that I am taking charge of my own instruction. So you want to ask the person if you are still dating, what's your instruction? And I ask the married in the house today, do you even know what your office is about? If you can, I, 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 I think you should be able to Go to our YouTube channel. I told a message at one of the men only um, editions. The office of the husband is an office. It's an office. People are taking out of what they don't understand because you are male. One of the worst disasters that happen on earth are men who marry because they're of age. But no sense. They don't even understand the function of the office they have entered. It's just like, I, I give this example and go to the last point. I have followed a bit of the politics in the United States. Even the loquacious and tough Trump, when he won election, he was not acting presidential. All those people that do body language stuff, the first meeting he had with Obama, they finished him. 
the way he sat, the way his composure was, because he had not been taught into the office. He was so loud in the election, he was so bold, he was so everything Trump, but that first meeting, it's like he was still trying to deal with, am I the president of the free world? Am I the most powerful man now? He was still trying. But guess what? The moment that guy stepped in the Oval Office, well coached, well trained, well talked to, assuming his place, uh, he has not even been able to shake off the presidential behavior, even after he came out, because he was taught into something. So you have a lot of men, you have a lot of women, they cannot defend what the office of husband or wife is. Cannot. Under the intentional side of the coin, the, the third R is responsive. Responsible is one, responsive is another. Marriage is a journey of feedbacks. No matter how long you stay married, no matter how long you stay in a relationship, there will always be a feedback you should take. Let me tell you the truth. The reason why some of us have not made progress with our life is the feedback we have refused to take, even as singles are married. 50 persons have told you you have anger problem, but you are the only one that is right among 50. It didn't get your attention to say, if 50 persons can say, it be like say, they didn't even tell you you have, oh, it be like say, it didn't get your attention. A lot of progress will be made in life when we become responsive. I have watched some marriage problem. I'm like, why don't you just take the simple feedback in the complaint of your spouse? Guess what? Even in the most heated argument, there's a feedback. There's something that's making them talk. There's something that's winding them up. There's something that's making it tough for them to stand you. Why don't you take the feedback? So I meet some couples. I went, see, people don't nearly exchange blue for my front. When counseling becomes war. You just step back first of all. So that straight blow. <laughs> ah! One couple lost it in front of me. All I was praying, God, let them just, just somehow. God, if you save me from this one, I'll not try it again. <laughs> As I say, what's going on? Pala, pa, di, pa, da, ah. What's the journey between I do and I don't? Not being responsive. When you go to the hospital, what's the first thing they take? Vital signs. Because they want to respond to something. So they are checking. How did we come here? What's the temperature? What's the this? What's the that? They are checking. You're quarreling, quarreling. What is the vital sign saying? What am I decoding? Why is my wife bitter? Why is my spouse not re responding? Why is my spouse afraid of my presence? Why are we doing two years relationship and the number of times we have, take, we have kept malice is equal to one and a half years? That means the relationship is just six months. <laughs> two years relationship, we have kept malice. The, if you put the aggregate time, we have kept malice. It's one year, six months. The only time we have been at peace. What's the feedback? We live in a world where we should take feedback. They must not force it. Just take it. Just observe. What can I do differently? How can I adjust? Until we come there, love relationships do not work. You know why? The Bible said that hope deferred makes the heart sick. So when your spouse is waiting for feedback and waiting for feedback to be taken and it's not been taken, you are making the person sick. Your presence becomes, guess what? Even when your spouse is quite wrong about their observation, there's still something to take. I'm telling you. So marriage in itself, yeah, you know, and again, this is where we'll make another mistake. Don't marry anybody to change it. It's not an excuse. I'm changing. I should change. I'm changing. I should change. Why? If I actually wanted to do me, I won't take her. So why are you married and still trying to live like this person has no right to alter who you are. Oh, let me do poetic, poetic now. You went to the altar because you'll be altered. Glory to God. Do you get what I'm saying? You'll be altered. Something must change. Please come, my controller. If you play games, you have a console. The console dictates the movement. I'm going to give you a practical example. Who is this? 
This is how I was supposed to show up to teach this evening. I'm a very practical teacher. I say it makes me look like a teacher and I want to come and teach. I got this jacket, I love it, but I realized it was slightly big. So I was supposed to use it for two, three sit outs ago. That's how it has been hanging in the wardrobe. If I, I hung it with this one, since they are gray gray, I thought I'll combine, so I just left it there. So today, life was just lively. So when I came back, I went to something that was arranged before. Should I tell them? <laughs> she started with a lie. Your stomach. I said, my stomach is not big. <laughs> is it a lie? <laughs> she actually... <laughs> Should I tell them? <laughs> my wife doesn't like me to look too muscularly good. <laughs> that girls will not be distracted. <laughs> so she used any excuse. Your stomach. It's tight. It's short. It's this. I said, Madam, enough. I'll go wear them. I wore it. I knew I'll win the argument. Of. I said, Look, in God's name, if this thing was more fitted, I'll wear it. But see, she was just smiling. You know, sometimes eh, when they want to give you feedback, bah, they'll stop talking. They'll just be looking at you. Do let me see. I'm your wife. So I say, okay. To hide how obvious it is that it is large, let me Obama the thing. Take feedback. All that stubbornness you are doing is causing quarrel. If I don't look good, it's my wife that caused it. <laughs> so when I wait, I realize, okay, it's balloon bolo. I sit in front of a mirror. I clip one. Ah, it's not too big, oh. Well, if it's big, it's a style. God bless you. <laughs> jacket because I don't want quarrel. <laughs> just take the feedback and have peace. You're just quarreling. Quarrel. Use this quarrel. Our wedding had peace. Feedback. The first time I heard of turquoise blue in my life was because of wedding. I say I donate to you everything that has to do with color. If you say you should wear orange on top of purple green and army yellow, we will wear it. Some people will look at my wedding dress and say, what kind of color combination is that? I say, my wife. <laughs> pink, uh, fuchsia pink, turquoise blue. See, today I don't know what fuchsia pink is. If I want to remember what fuchsia pink is, I go to my wedding picture. Fuchsia pink and turquoise blue. And I have peace. Because the most important thing in the wedding is that I'll go home with the wife. <laughs> the color, notwithstanding. So, so, oh, you want me to be embarrassed? I don't know. I don't even understand. I have color, my, I have color block, blindness. I, me and color, we are not two friends. That's what I like. I have many dark-based things. Just go dark and have peace. Before somebody. The only thing I know, I know, is that belt and shoe must have the same color. Any other thing, I don't understand. So I dress... What's the feedback? Because the person who should be proud when I step out is her. Your opinion does not count. Your opinion, that's how one girl want to put me under pressure one time. I want to take my wife's own opinion and left the girl's opinion. See the way your friend looks if you do walk out, my God. Say I should just go to a gym. I've never raised her in gym in my life. Mumu, and now I told my wife the way the girl said it. First of all, she's asking who is that person? <laughs> who? Who is, do you, who is that person? Who, who is that person? Do you know the next thing she said? Say, if you are going to register an energy, we are going together. <laughs> feedback. Feed, feedback for peace. My baby be talking. I'm taking feedback. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? So you have relationships that are rocked because somebody is not taking feedback. Why do you think in any standard place where you have a stage, you have this. Because I should receive a feedback. I should know whether the sound is good, the sound is okay. Like I told them already, see, the fact that we are putting up with certain things does not mean we don't know what we need. 
So because we're having soak next month, I have told them to get to beef up the sound so that when we come here and we're singing unto the Lord, it will be unto the Lord indeed. This is fair to talk. This cannot serve for soak that we want to have next month. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that even the music minister who stands here can feel the sound. You must take feedback. So you have a relationship of people insisting. That's who I am. If that's who you are, live my life. You came into my life because I would have a say. You came into my life because you enthroned me to have a say. So you see, quarrels upon quarrels because I'm not taking feedback. The strongest human voice on earth should be this voice. And I'll tell you a few things. Quite honestly, as well as to the married, the biggest loser, if I'm hot here, is her. Please don't be deceived by everybody that tells you how much they love you. Widow is only one. Widow is only one. Ask any, I've been in church long enough. Promises are made at barrier. Promises, lies. We will be there for you. We will stand with you. We will not lie. So this is the strongest human voice. You don't love me enough. Now she love me, Pastor. So I must take feedback. I must take feedback. So, oh, Jesus died in response to our fall. It's a responsive love. He could have left us. If you think he could have not left us, let me give you an example. God told Moses, I will wipe these human beings and create you a new set. God. The coming of Jesus was a choice exercised in response to a need. I lost my bride. I'm going for my bride. Why do you think scripture says, come, let's reason together? He wants a feedback. How do you feel about me? What's going on? Why did Jesus say to them, who do men say that I am? He wanted a feedback. He wanted to gauge what body of knowledge are they still lacking. When they spoke about what men said, they were all false of him. He now asked them, okay, I pardon them. They're not close enough. Who do you say that I am? What was he looking for? He was looking for a feedback. So you have a lot of people in relation. You have lost relationship because you didn't take feedback. Simple feedback. Humble yourself. Because you cannot take feedback without humility. You must be responsive. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he was equal to God and was not going to be robbery to claim the status, he humbled himself. There's a feedback in that scripture. How do I adjust for greatness? I take feedback. That's where my peace is here. So, we've looked at two sides. Think about it. The emotional side is good. But let me share this story. Let me share this then. Quite honestly. When I say these things, people think it's just a joke. No marriage can keep you naturally excited. That's just a fantasy that singles have. There's nobody you marry that you are made emotionally for life. Nobody. Nobody. It has a lifespan. Feelings are so fickle. And I keep telling people, the reason I teach things like this with passion is Christian marriages don't fail by divorce. Christian marriages fail by implosion. They are together, but not together. Problem. If I don't play my role, that's what will happen. If I'm not responsive, that's what will happen. If I don't reality check to set my expectation of what to expect, that's what will happen. So I must come to that point where I decisively go beyond the emotional. I've known this girl for 20 years. If I talk about right now, I'm talking about her from choice. And the choice creates the feeling. So that right now I'm in a feeling factory generating it. Not just waiting. And then I've heard nonsense in my life. I'm no longer feeling it. Who is not creating it? Because we're so stuck on the emotional side of the coin that we have forgotten. And that's why I can't lie to myself. This girl married me broke. It would be wickedness to stay broke. Because that side had an emotional pull. It had a love that said, you know what? I will die with you if need be. But guess what? The worst thing to do to a woman who believes in you in your broke state is to stay broke. 
Because as the age winds down, even a girl that tells you, even if we remain like this till we die, somewhere in her heart she's hoping we don't die like this. I just hope. It takes material things to keep a girl that is not materialistic. I'm going to repeat that. It takes material things to keep a girl that is not materialistic. Because she lives on it. So you marry a woman for the rest of her life, she uses imitation. No, there's gold. There's silver and there's diamond. Mm. She may not demand it, but it is foolishness not to give it. Nike! She's not materialistic. If you keep her at this level in five years' time, I'll disown you. You are not my son. Wake up with something. I said, you followed me like this, you don't end like this. Can't end like this. Because see that emotion, it will go down. When landlord knock, I say, where's rent? Head goes start to the scratch. I saw men, I saw men. I don't know how to handle with this boy. <laughs> Reality check. Come, come, come. So there are times. Ah, I'll give you one more story. I had a minister one night and I had a deadline. I walked into the house midnight. When you ask school fees to pay, rent to pay, a woman to keep happy. I did that work 12 to 5 a.m. to deliver. Some things will take sleep out of your eye. Because it's not about uh, Negin, Negin, Negin. You know, Indian movie can just deceive somebody. <laughs> Everything will just be flowing, flowing. Nigerian movie, the moment somebody just leaves Anambra and enter Lagos, you just blow. <laughs> Nigerian movie has sent people to Lagos, they are still. <laughs> You're just enjoying the preaching. You're lost in it. This is my report card. All the guys married in this house. Your wife is your report card. Reality check. Sean, when you marry a woman. Sean, when you marry a woman, she'll be your report card. Should be your field where you plant. I should stop. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> Sean! When you marry your wife, you are going to invest to reap a harvest of a response. No matter the quality she comes with. The quality she comes with is proof of fertile ground. But fertile ground does not produce until I sow a seed. Every woman had a womb before a man made them pregnant. But it took the investment. That's the reality we're talking about here. You know why I'm repeating this part? I hold the view that we have more to say to men in this generation because we can dictate what happens. Just like the pilot flies us where he will fly. Hope you know why they now make sure that you have at least two, is it two captains or whatever in the cockpit? Because people began to have mental health issues and crash planes. So they say, bia, bia, bia. Let's not leave one madman. <laughs> Even the one that happened recently, small plane. One simply went out to go and ease himself. And the mental health person locked the cockpit. They did everything. If he was sane, he, the destiny of everybody in the plane suddenly fell on his palm. That's how powerful you are as a man. So yes, yeah, she came with womb. Yes, yeah, she's the father I saw. But what I saw is what ultimately creates the harvest. So I must take my role as a powerful person. And on this side, I'm not without word. You know what Satan is doing today? He's creating infertile women who are not able to receive the seed of love, able to receive the investment of even a good man. So you see disaster happening because it takes both for God to fulfill his plan. 
Praise God. Thank you. Clap for her.